everyone, Kevin here once again with my one, two, three cents, and today we're going to take a walk down memory lane. We're going to rewind and head back to 1998, January of 1998. Um, Thursday Night Thunder was a WCW production that had just gotten started, and this was about the third or fourth week in January, about the second or third episode of Thunder, and they were in town in Huntsville, Alabama. And at the time, I was living in Florence, Alabama, about an hour away, and I was working as a reporter and a news anchor at a TV station there. And so I was able to get some media passes because of my job and, and do some coverage. Now, this was, again, 1998, so wrestling was really at its pinnacle. The Monday Night Wars were hot and heavy. Uh, Raw was just starting to uh, make a comeback against Nitro, and uh, Thunder was the new show in town, so to speak, and was starting up because of the success that Nitro was having. So Eric Bischoff and company had created Thunder as a way to uh, keep the wrestling audience entertained, I guess, more or less. And so we uh, went over and covered this event, like I said, in Huntsville, and was able to meet several wrestlers and do interviews with them before the show. So I've got a collection of those interviews, but uh, I talked to four people for wrestlers or managers, if you will, uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, who is um, my all-time favorite manager and, and one of my favorites in the business altogether. Uh, meeting him was really an awesome experience, and as you can see in the video, I'm uh, quite starstruck when I do actually uh, talk to him. Also talked to Bill Goldberg. Now, this was back before Goldberg was red hot and on that big, incredible winning streak. He had just started that streak and uh, wasn't quite to where he was with the company yet. And you may notice, though, that the Goldberg interview is not included here. Now, that's because um, Doug Dillinger, who was the head of WCW Security at the time, came over after I had done the interview with Goldberg, and after I had done the interview with him, there was a lull, and so I was getting some video of the ring setup. They were getting the ring ready for that night, and uh, I didn't think anything of it. Nobody said, don't get any video of the ring, so I started shooting video of the ring, and uh, Dillinger came over and was very uh, gruff and asked me what I was doing, and uh, maybe even used a couple of explicitives, but, uh, you know, kind of yelled at me and, and asked for the tape, and... I explained to him that I had interviewed Goldberg already and that and that was on the tape and I had hoped that they weren't going to uh, keep the tape and he said no they weren't going to keep it but they were going to erase the video of the ring footage and I had promised him I wasn't going to use it but nobody had told me not to so that's why I, I had used or had shot the video of it. So uh, they took the tape and he said they would try to save the interview well they didn't and so that was lost, so that's not included on here. So uh, Doug Dillinger, you know, 13 years later, I'm still not a big fan of his. Uh, anyway, also talked to uh, that night Buff Bagwell, who uh, was in character the whole time and very funny. Uh, and, you know, I've heard a lot of backstage reports about the guy. You know, it's all what you read, and I found him to be a nice guy. He was uh, very cordial and, and took some time to talk to me before and after the interview. So, uh, you know... I, Take that for what it's worth. And then finally talked to uh, the late, great Ray Trailer, who uh, was also the big boss man. Now, this was right after he had left the NWO. And part of the tape, because this is such an old tape, um, part of that interview was a little unusable for, uh, for Internet purposes. I, I wanted to use the best quality stuff that I had uh, that I'm able to use. So uh, his interview is kind of short, but he stays in character the whole time and talks about uh, leaving the NWO and what his role is going to be at Thunder that night. So enjoy. They don't, they don't realize that the power of television lies in the fans. They think the power of television is the NWO. That's not so. It's with the fans. And I like being able to say that. I like being able to say, hey, little kid, I love being around you. They don't do that. They just try to run over everybody. And I don't, I'm not worked that way, and that's why I left them. Rick and Scott Steiner, are you going to continue teaming with them? I'm out here watching their back tonight. I'm not actually scheduled for a match, but I'm out here watching their back. Anything can happen. All right. right. Wrestling and of, of Bobby Heenan, I've no, watched it for you. years. Um, probably the greatest manager in wrestling history. What do you, uh, how do you, make the transition from wrestler to manager now to commentator here at WCW? Well, I guess the same way Frank Gifford did it or you know, a lot of the other guys. I, uh, I broke my neck in 1983 and uh, I just got out of the ring in 91 and uh, I wrestled those years on and off. Mostly I managed. I, I, was, I was hurt but I didn't have it done because I didn't want to take the time off. I didn't know it was that bad. I really didn't think I broke it. I thought I just pinched a nerve all those years. but. Uh, that's one of the reasons I got out of it. But making the transition is easy because I knew the I, I knew the product. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You know, it's not like I couldn't do hockey. Right. I couldn't call hockey because I can't even, you can't read the names like an eye chart. But in wrestling, I know what's going on. I know the stars. I know, I know the, uh, the referees. I know the, the fans, what they like, what they don't like. And it's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun to do. Any advice to somebody like myself who is a big fan of the sport and someday I would like to be up there commentating, calling a n Monday Nitro, a Thursday Night Thunder. What could I do to maybe prepare myself for a career in wrestling broadcasting? If you want to really prepare for wrestling broadcasting, you're not going to learn wrestling broadcasting doing baseball, hockey, or anything else. You're going to have to learn doing wrestling. Mm -hmm. So watch it at home on TV and do play-by-play -play while you're doing it. Then when you shave in the morning, do your openings, do your closers. You're seeing yourself in the mirror. But do play-by-play, -play, do color, do it smart, smart act, smart alchemy if you want. Do it straight if you want. Do it all different ways. That's how you learn. All because right. that's the only way I know how to do it. Great. Thank you very much. Oh, I appreciate pleasure. it. Okay, you went from Marcus Alexander Bagwell a couple of years ago. Well, Kevin, now just you're just ask me the question. Do you see I'm a busy man here? Can't you see that you just can't have a body like this by just sitting around interviewing all day? Just ask me the question. All right, buff the stuff. How did you become buff? Real simple. <laughs> Is that answer your question? <laughs> I mean, is that answer your question? What would you call yourself if you had a body like this? I, I'd call myself. Would you myself... call yourself John or Frank? Or would you say you're buff? I mean, come on. Look at that. That's the biggest arm in the world, Steiner. Ain't got nothing on me. Who are you fighting tonight? You know, I'm going to run down as many times as I can and beat up everybody I get a chance to beat up. That's what I'm going to do tonight. All right, and the fans here in Huntsville, I don't know how they're going to react to you now that you're buff. Uh, well, what do you got to say about that? It's really weird. It's, it's, um, it's sold out for one reason, because of the NWO. And they boo us, but they love us. And that's what I like. I'll look out and they'll be booing us, but if you look really deep in their eye, you can see they think I am so cool. So it's like, I know they want to hate me, but then down deep they just go home going, you know what? That buff is a cool guy, you know? So they can hate me all they want as long as they keep buying those tickets in the very top row and come and see that, then it's okay. I think you're cool, so. Okay, brother, that's all right, matters. Me. All right. You know what? I'm buff, and I'm the stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that stroll down memory lane. I know for me, uh, as a young journalist, this was 13 years ago, I probably uh, seemed pretty, uh, pretty green there and, and pretty much marked out or was marking out as I was doing those interviews, so I was trying to uh, contain myself with that and focus on what I was doing. So not the best quality of interviews, but I appreciate you checking it out. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. And that's my one, two, three cents for now. I'll be back soon with another post. Thanks for watching. <laughs>